My name is Alistair Oliver, a director with Edelex and a member of the Open Aquila Global Advisory Group. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the platform, explain what it does, its purpose, and how institutions globally are using the platform. I'll also talk about its roadmap. To start with, let me tell you about Edelex. Edelex and its staff have been working with Open Aquila for a number of years. We partner with other providers of Open Aquila support around the world, and we're currently responsible for all Open Aquila development. So what is Open Aquila? Traditionally, Open Aquila was known as a learning content management system with its primary purpose to store learning content. However, over time, it has evolved to be known as a digital repository in that it's capable of storing any type of digital content, whether that content relates to learning content, research materials, library assets, or media assets. As a single point for managing and finding digital content, institutional users are easily able to find content, reuse it, and repurpose it. Content within Aquella can relate to copyright materials, and content can also be tagged with digital rights. Open Aquella has a powerful workflow engine so that content that has to undertake a quality assurance process can easily be reviewed. It also handles archiving and versioning of content. But for most of our users, Aquella is used in connection with their learning management system. So whilst learning management systems do many things very well, they are very course centric in that content is often locked down within a particular course. Whereas Open Aquella opens up that content so that many, many users across the institution can access it. Open Aquella has been implemented in a wide number of ways by our clients. To start with, most clients use the platform to store learning resources or open educational resources that are then linked into third-party platforms, such as the learning management system. But over time, institutions recognise they're able to store any type of digital content within the platform. So many of these other use cases can often apply, such as the storage of copyright materials, the development of thesis collections, the storage of resources relating to research, such as research materials and publications, and also for institutional governance, including the storage of really any type of digital asset. Open Aquella is currently used by a large number of universities, TAFE and community college systems, K-12 departments, and corporate training providers around the world. So let's hear from some of Open Aquella's users. Hi, my name is Paul and I'm going to show you how to access and use TAFE Queensland Learning Content Management System badged Resource Bank. Resource Bank is an open Aquella application used to support the management of master product licenses and associated content, images, supplementary content, staff training resources and commercial product access. This includes TAFE Queensland owned resources and externally owned resources that TAFE Queensland have licensed or have permission to use. All staff of TAFE Queensland can access Resource Bank 24 seven, both from on campus or from an external location. Resource Bank provides the ability for staff to contribute, discover and use resources across the state, which has assisted in the consolidation of development time, consistency of unit content and access to the most recent version of master product. Our master product are units of competency that have been developed, quality checked and are made ready for delivery, including assessment, content exports from our learning management system and the original source files. So what's coming next? We're looking forward to the next upgrade, which will introduce an improved image gallery with lightbox display appearances for our image collection. So um, California College of the Arts, I'll just really briefly um, 
tell you about it because we're a relatively smallish institution. Um, this year, kind of post COVID disruption, we're at 1600 FTE. Um, last year, we were a little closer to 2000. So, you know, we're dealing with that. Um, we have two campuses, San Francisco and Oakland, and our faculty body is largely made up of practicing artists and designers. Um, so this makes for an institutional culture of experimentation, agility, um, flexibility, lots of um, need. Everybody wants their own thing, right? So nothing terribly unique, but um, a very big driving force in our implementation of Oakland Equala. Um, so first I wanted to mention just our customized theme. Um, everyone can go to vault.cca.edu. Uh, we call our instance vault. Um, we created a dashboard portlet that pulls images from different collections. Um, and you can see here we have like student work, library collections, campus planning. These are all different tabs. And every time you come back to the dashboard, it pulls up uh, another random set of images. Um, and so this was an idea that we had to kind of highlight images from different collections because it's so big. I mean, we have over 73,000 records. Um, many of those have multiple files associated with each record. And so it just becomes so vast and so big. We first um, implemented Aquella when it was Aquella in 2011. So we're coming up on 10 years now. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Aviation Australia, we're an a, a aviation training um, college in based out of Brisbane. Our main, main training centre is in Brisbane, uh, but we have um, campuses around Australia and, uh, and even over, overseas. We focus mainly on uh, aircraft maintenance engineering training. So uh, both um, theoretical and, and, a lot, and practical. So we have practical facilities and that small image there in the left uh, is, is, is a sample of the prac training that we have. We also do uh, flight attendant training, uh, a little bit of uh, pilot training and I guess um, one of the growth sectors in aviation is uh, the remote pilot training. So uh, one of our primary focuses for bringing in Equella was um, maintaining compliance. So being easily or readily able to illustrate compliance with all of those regulators, the regulated environment. Uh, so we have to have approvals and authorizations to provide both the, the practical training and the, the content training so that our students walk away with the option for uh, licensing. So to maintain compliance uh, across all of those, uh, or maintain our content compliance with all of those organizations, we, we put together uh, a lot of um, taxonomies, I guess, a lot of terms that we apply to the content to, so that if we are audited, we can easily search within our uh, repository and pull back uh, the resources relevant to that that particular term, um, so that auditors can you know re readily see what it is we deliver and make sure the content is um, fit for purpose, but also uh, in accordance with the regulations. So, how is Open Aquella evolving? The key focus over the last twelve months has been to overhaul the user interface. As a mature platform, it was in desperate need of a refresh. This development will continue for the next couple of years, given the size and maturity of the platform. In addition to the work on the UI, there's been extensive work completed on accessibility improvements, a number of key dependency upgrades, as well as patching of a large number of versions. Before we provide a little bit more of an overview of Aquella's new user interface, it's important to see where we've come from. Here, you can see the legacy UI available within the platform. And on this screen, we can see what the UI now looks like. Kath Fitzgerald, our product manager, will now show you the new user interface. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Kath Fitzgerald. I'm Product Manager for Open Aquella with Edelex and I'd like to show you an overview of the new Search UI that has been released in 2020.2. First of all, we need to make sure under our UI settings that we have the new search page UI switched on. When we go to the new search page, we can see that there's four main panels. There's the search query bar up the top here, there's search results, the refined search panel, and then classifications. So let's take a look at the search query bar first. So the default search is actually a wildcard search and there's an invisible wildcard so asterisk that you can't see when we start typing in. So it finds anything that starts with what you've typed in and it can end with anything else. So you can see here we've got kelp, we've got kelpies as well. Um, we also have a raw search option and this is kind of an exact match although it still supports stemming and stop words. So you can see it's only returned to kelp there. Now let's have a look at our search results panel. So you can see we have our search results and we also have um, the number of search results showing there. I'll just remove that so we have a few more. Okay, so we can see that we have a thumbnail for each of our results um, and that will be the first attachment that is listed in the item. We have default thumbnails for um, the different MIME types, um, if there isn't actually an image, etc. Uh, to show. And for any that don't have any attachments, we have this default thumbnail, uh, which we thought depicted metadata well, just metadata. For each one of our attachments, we can preview. So you can see it will uh, show the preview. Uh, you can even preview videos in here. So we have a video here and you can actually press play and preview the video from in here. We can also just you can see that. I'll stop that. <laughs> uh, yes, and if there are MIME types such as links and uh, documents, etc., it may open a new tab and preview them in the new tab. We also have our status, the last time it was modified, and if we mouse over the modified uh, time, it will give us an exact date and time. And we have uh, the links to any comments, uh, which doesn't show if there's no comments, and same with star ratings. At the bottom, we have our pagination. Uh, it defaults to 10 results per page, and we can change that if we want to look at more, up to 50. Um, we can move through our pages. We can also go right to the end of our results and right back to the beginning of our results. When we do a search, if there are results we have highlighted in the title and the description uh, matching results, but if there are also results in the attachments, we get this little magnifying glass icon next to the attachment icon, which tells us that somewhere in those attachments there is a matching result. If we had a bunch of filters set, and it, I'll just use an example, I'll just pick a collection, and we've got our search criteria in here, and I decide I want to do a fresh search and clear all filters and all search criteria, I can use this new search button and that will clear all filters ready for a fresh search. We also have the sort option visible in the search results panel at all times. So at an institution level, this is set to relevance um, in this particular example. I could go and change that to a different sort order if I wish. And we can see it there all the time. Additionally, if I have a search set up and I might have a number of different filters set with that, I can use this um, copy search link to clipboard, which will copy the URL 
including all the filters that are set and any search criteria entered. And when I paste that into another browser or I could email it to somebody else and they paste it in a browser, it will show the same search with filters intact. Now let's have a look at our refined search panel. So I touched on the collection selector. Um, so we have a selector now which will allow multiple selections. So I can actually search in two or more, actually a single one as well, uh, collections and um, I can see when I click away from there, I can see what I'm searching in and I can use the down arrow to look at any extra ones that I can't see there. I can remove one if I want to and I can clear all of them using this cl uh, clear button. We can also search in our collections now, so which is great for people who have many, many collections. We can find them very easily. We can search for another one, etc. Our Access Advanced Searches drop down allows us to look at our advanced searches and then click on the ones that we want. In 2020.2, when we click on an advanced search, it will actually open the legacy search page because the new material UI technologies have not yet been applied to the advanced search page, but they will be in a future release. The refined search panel also has a show more link to open up more filters. And in a similar way to the access advanced searches, we have access remote repositories. And again, if we click on one of them, it will take us to the legacy search page. We have our date modified filter and we have some predefined ranges in here that we can pick from. There are quick options. We can also use exact dates. So we have our um, from and to dates and I can pick a from date and it will show me only those items that have been edited since that date until today's date. Similarly, if I clear that and put only a to date in, so I might go back a few months, it will show me only those that have been edited prior to the date I have in the to date. And of course we could put in a date range to only show those between those two dates. We do have a new option in settings that will allow uh, administrators to hide this date modified filter if they don't think it's relevant for their users. And that also applies to the owner filter. So there is an option to not display the owner filter in the refined search panel too. So our owner filter is very similar to the one that we had in the legacy UI, just looks prettier. So we can search for users and select a user. And it will show that user in the refined search panel and we have uh, the bin to delete. If we close that or use the show less button and we have a filter set, we get this icon here, this filter icon to indicate that we do have a filter set. And then we have our status filter. Now this one will only show if at an institution level the administrators have allowed um, items that have a status other than live to be searched. So if I click all on that filter, it will show me not only live results, but if I have um, moderation um, items or items in moderation um, or deleted items um, or items in review, it will show all of them rather than just live items. We also have search attachments and if we say no, it, when we put in search terms, it won't look in attachments for matches. So we can show less there and it just keep the refined search panel small. We also have our classifications panel uh, and I have a separate video that you might like to watch that talks about classifications and their configuration. To learn more about OpenFile, please contact info at edelx.com.